Big changes at the academy level now, uh, now that we're in League Two. Uh, can you talk through what the key changes are, really, for you and the team? Yeah, of course. It's, you know, this has been seems like a long time in in coming, really. Was um, in the original my original remit was to get us as as near ready as we possibly could. So we did that with the um, setting up the academy and its previous guys, really, at SGS Academy, which proved successful for us. You know, there's there's lots of different ways to do it, but obviously, clearly, um, moving to the to the EFLs. You know, really, really helped, and um, will enable us now to to push it forward even more and have a bigger and better academy. And you've got a new team of staff. Then, can you introduce who they are? For yeah, us? of course. Obviously, um, Chris Parker has, has come in. He's uh, had a fantastic playing career. Ten years in the Championship with Cardiff and QPR and Barnsley and, and, and Plymouth. And you know, he's someone I got to know really closely last last year. Obviously, he worked with me at, at Western Supermare first team level um, he's had some great experiences as a as a player and, and as a coach but first and foremost he's a very good coach very good person um, really really keen to 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 work with him with the, with a young group of players and um, it was really important for me that we got the structure right off the pitch first um, because this is you know a blank canvas really for us and um, it's a really exciting time so I've been able to bring in in Chris who interviewed Brilliantly, obviously we had a um, good experience last year together at Western, but you know he, he gets on well with with everybody here. Shares the same ethos as the first team staff and 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 manager and, and myself. So it was a really it was a very simple transition once we'd left Western um, to 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 bring him in, and he's been fantastic with the with the young players, you know, as as Wade was last year. So um, to have two coaches of their you know, with their playing experience has been fantastic for our young players and obviously I followed a different pathway in my career so it shows the boys that, you know, there's there's different ways of progressing in, in the game. Um, so so Barks will come in and, and he'll be the under-18 manager and, and sort of head coach of that really and, and I'll be out on the training pitch with him. Um, Megan's come in, Megan Hoden, who um, people will know her here because she's volunteered for, for probably the best part of two seasons. So she'll she'll sit underneath um, Joe and and Ian Weston, the head of medical at the club, and and she'll look after all the academy side of things as well as providing us sports science provision, which is obviously really important. And then um, off off the pitch, really, is as important as as anyone. We've got you know James is Mooney is really helping with the, the head of ops kind of role, which will um, make everything. You just tick along, make it smooth, all the fixtures, all the transport arrangements, you know, all those um, bits that go largely unnoticed. Um, he's obviously a great organiser and a, and a good person, so it's fantastic that he's, um, the club have found a way to, to allocate some of his time to, to helping us in, in what's, you know, a new venture for us. One of the biggest roles, really, and, and rightly so, is a head of education. Um, so Vicky French, you know, we'll, we'll be starting here. Um, early September. Um, I've worked with Vicky for five years at SGS College and she'll really mediate between the club and, and the education provider SGS and, and ensure the boys achieve academically because that's a huge part of, of what we believe in. Um, it's also a part of um, uh, for the funding and to, to make sure that the boys achieve academically is massively important. So that relationship with SGS is, is really key for you guys, I take it. Yeah, it's been great. We've it's a long-standing relationship now. You know, we've we've been together now for five years. They're they're experienced in this. Um, you know, they provide the education for Bristol Rovers and Bristol City Scholars as well at our other campus down at, at Wise. Um, so it was, you know, really it was an it was a no-brainer for us to for for them to continue providing the education for our boys because they've got some some fantastic teachers there. Um, you know, the, the facility is not too far away from the stadium where where the boys are going to be based. We're also going to be playing in a new league this season as well, so increased competition, better sides. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Of course. You know, we've been we've been trying to play against these sides for four or five years. You you're actually and probably rightly so now. I'm on the other side of the fence, not allowed in until you become a, you know officially a, a football league club. So we'll be in the EFL Youth Alliance, the South West Region, with the likes of Plymouth and Portsmouth and Oxford. You know, Cheltenham's Newport, you're testing me now, Yeovil, Exeter, Oxford, um, Swindon, of course. So it's a great league for the boys. You know, if, you know I wasn't fortunate enough to, to to play in that division when I was when I was younger. 
Um, so they've got a great opportunity to, to play against some fantastic football clubs and it can only benefit us because they're playing you know, with and against better players at better facilities you know, with, with full-time staff. So for a young player now, it's an exciting time to be at the club. And obviously you were manager at Western last season alongside your role at the academy. How valuable was that experience for you in terms of managing them and, and building that relationship with them as a club? Yeah, this is a really good football club, Weston, and um, you know I was really proud and privileged to be given the, the opportunity to do that. They all fully support me in doing that as well, which has been great for my own my own development, as well as um, Mark and Scott Lindsay were on hand all the time to offer me advice if if we needed it. Um, it was a great experience, and you know I enjoyed every every minute of it. And you know, last year we were able to do that alongside um, the academy because the structure and how it was, was, was had been like set up for five years, so it was quite smooth. Um, became very clear very early on after Wembley that that we wouldn't be able to continue doing doing both. This is just a huge operation now, and. You know, I've been given a fantastic opportunity to take the, the academy into the Football League for the first time and it's something that I'm really excited about. And we've seen a few new players uh, players that you've had uh, through the academy signing pro deals this summer. How big is that for you and, and how much of a spur is that for the young players in the academy? Well, it's great. It's great. It's, um, I've got to be honest, I, you know, f- football now with under-21s and reserve teams and um, different platforms to play reserve games, it's probably never been easier to become a first-year pro. That's, I don't want to do Jordan and Tommy any injustice by you know, making it sound like it was easy, but you know, it's a fact that it's never been easier to earn that first deal. It's the next part that's the hard bit, and I'm sure... Um, you would have seen when interviewing them that uh, you know they're under no illusions that it's going it's, it's really tough. It's a tough world to break into. It's hard to get there. It's even harder to stay there. So they're they're they're, um, they're too good lads. They couldn't have done any more over the two year period, and, and we we felt they did more than enough to to earn that that first deal. And now it's um, you know they're they're in it now. They're they're in with the big boys, and they've got a they've got to become the probably the hardest working players at the club to. To take that next next step, and you know, us as a club, we we can just all we can do is support them and give them a platform to to do that. And and if they go on and represent the first team regularly, then fantastic. If if they don't, then we need to find them a you know a, a different pathway in into the game because um, lots of kids, lots of kids now don't want to go out on loan. Um, they want to sit at their clubs, and and we found that last year when, when we were at Western trying to get players out of. Big clubs didn't want to didn't want to go out on loan, and the ones that did, you know, really kicked on. So we'll be encouraging our boys to um, to go out and, and and grab any opportunity they can get to get first team football.